To begin, I used a bandsaw and cut a square out of a large piece of 6061 aluminum that is 4 and 5 8 inch thick. I then cut the corners and I'm left with an octagon that is thick enough to make two pieces just in case. Next, I'm using the four jaw chuck to hold the piece in the lathe. I have the jaws reversed and I have them adjusted close enough to clamp the piece. I give it a final wipe, place the piece into the chuck and hold it firmly against the chuck as I tighten each jaw against it. I use an indicator to get the piece close. It doesn't need to be exact. The piece is not square. I just want it to be close. I now have it where I want it and I go around the chuck and tighten and retighten each jaw. This is a very large piece for this small lathe and I want it held really firmly. I double check to make sure I have it right. It's within 20 thousandths, which is plenty good. I go ahead and check the face run out as well. Not that it really makes much, much difference. And it's within 20 thousandths. Now I'm ready to start machining the project. The first thing I want to do is get a center. I'll use a center drill and do this. I'm going to use a life center in my tailstock for stability and it will give me a nice visual for lining up my tooling throughout the rough end process. Next I'll face the piece. All I want to do is get a decent 100% clean up cut here. Next I now have the piece 100% cleaned up on the outside diameter and I'm starting to rough in the largest diameter on the pulley. I ground up a piece of quarter inch high speed steel for my tool with a nice little chip breaker. I really got it cut and sweet. I got a beautiful chip. The spindle speed is 45 RPM. And the feed rate is seven and a half thousandths of revolution. I'm taking a hundred thousandths depth of cut so that's two hundred thousandths off the diameter each pass. That's a big cut for this machine. Next, I rough in the small diameter of the pulley. As you can see, I have stopped short every pass into the shoulder. Again, I'm just roughing a piece in at this time, meaning I'm leaving about 30 thousandths on each machine surface. My rough-in cuts, for the most part, are large and I don't want to be cutting two perpendicular surfaces at the same time. So after I have my dimension for the small diameter, I then go back and finish roughing the shoulder. After this, I go ahead and peel the large diameter of the pulley further on back. I realized when it came time to cut the pulley off, I didn't want to deal with the shoulder that close to my cutoff point. And now the piece is all roughed in and it's time now to get the hole drilled into it. I start out drilling a hole with a size larger center drill than I used back in the beginning. I am not going to drill the hole all the way through. The leftover material will be good for some other project in the future. So a through hole isn't a good idea. My finished overall thickness of the pulley is 2 inches 37 thousandths. So I have marked my drills to drill 2 and a quarter inches deep, which will leave me a nice flat piece of material left over. I use a 5 16 drill, then step up to a 5 8 drill. The next operation is boring a hole to size. Here is a shot of the boring bar I selected and the tool which is just a sliver of high speed steel with a tiny chip breaker ground into it. Here's a look of the alignment before I start the boring process. Notice how I have clearance all the way around the boring bar. It is critical that you only have the tip of the cutting surface of the tool in contact with the workpiece.
This diameter is the most critical dimension on the piece. My motor shaft is 875 and I am looking for 875.5 to 876. Here I am checking the diameter with a telescope gauge and then miking it. I double check it and then I stick the gauge deep inside the hole and check the diameter there as well. I want to make sure I have no taper in the hole. Everything is good. I have nailed my dimension within my tolerance. We are going to have an excellent snug slip fit on the motor shaft. Next I am going to start finishing all the machine surfaces on the pulley. Here is a shot of the facing tool ground up with a chip breaker. It is made of quarter inch high speed tooling as well. Here I'm taking a light cut to clean up the face. The face also becomes a zero point from which all the dimensions will be held from across the pulley. Next, I finish the, dia the large diameter of the pulley. Notice I am only peeling it back just enough to cover the length of the pulley. Because there is still plenty of time and work left here to screw up and possibly scrap my piece. So if that were to happen and I had to turn my piece around and start over, I don't want a finished dimension to deal with. Then I finished a smaller diameter and shoulder and now we are ready for the poly V grooves. The first thing I want to do here is very lightly make a mark on the center line of each groove. The mark is so light you may or may not be able to see it here in the video. What I did was very carefully measure the V's in my existing pulley. After working the math and determining my dimensions, I came up with a 40 degree included angle or 20 degrees per side. The depth of the V is 120 thousandths and it is 140 thousandths from the center of one groove to the next. After that, I went on the internet and found dimensions for many different sizes of serpentine belts, but I could not find the size I was making. But I did however find that no matter what size the grooves were all had a 40 degree included angle. This gave me confidence I was on the right track since that is the angle I measured on my pulley. After making the marks I held the belt to them for a visual inspection and the marks are right on the money. Here I am roughing in the grooves. I'm going as straight as possible to 140 thousandths depth, which is deeper than I need to be. Keep in mind the belt runs on the angle or sides of the V, not the top and bottom of the grooves. Also the grooves are not to a point. They have about a 30 thousandths flat on them. As you can see, I already have the smaller diameter all roughed in. Now I am finishing the sides of the V. Notice my compound, the part that holds the tool holder, is set 20 degrees. I am using the compound slide and cutting all the right hand sides of the V's first. Next, here is a closer shot of me cutting the left hand side of the V's. Notice the compound is now 20 degrees the other side of perpendicular, which gives me a 40 degree included angle overall on the V.
Now the large diameter of the pulley is completely finished. I am deburring each and every side of the top of the V's that go up inside the belt. I am using the thin side or edge of my file to do that. This is a really important step because I don't want any burrs or sharp corners where the belt comes in contact or it will chew the belt up. Finally, the last side of all the grooves to finish is the side closest to the shoulder on the small diameter. As you can see, I had to make a special tool to clear the shoulder. Now, all the grooves are cut for the pulley. And as you can see here, I'm taking a red scotch bright and jamming it into the grooves and uh, just uh, deburring and uh, making sure we don't have any sharp edges. I then cut the piece off and now I'm putting it back into the chuck to face it to length. I'm using an indicator to get it close. It doesn't have to be dead on on the diameter. What does matter is that I have the piece firmly against the back side of the jaws so it will be square. The next step is to face the piece to length. After that I'll deburr the hole here with a uh, burr knife. And then I'll take a file and uh, make sure we got all the burrs knocked off the uh, outside diameter there. Then I'll uh, go ahead and take a mic and check my dimension. We're all good and we're all done. Take the piece out of the chuck. And we're finished. If you like this video, by all means, please subscribe. And I want to thank everyone for watching.